Hello, Augies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kastler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. Today we're going to talk about grounding. Uh, for um, a question from Dave K04 DLG. Um, he's in northeastern Florida. Okay, I've been to Florida. I spent my uh, first tour in the Air Force. Uh, at MacDill Air Force Base and I'm quite familiar with the lightning problem he talks about. There was lightning every day all the time and uh, I did uh, survive one hurricane it was Frederick. We had 18 inches of rain in 11 hours and that flooded about everything but we were just barely, I do mean barely, well positioned. The flooding actually came up to the top step on our uh, front porch so a few inches below the foundation or below the uh, well it was a slab so it didn't come into the house except a little bit in a converted garage it's <laughs> you gotta like weather to uh, live in Florida uh, it was quite an interesting place uh, my wife then wife really wanted to stay there and I actually found a job with track microwave uh, so that I could stay there and uh, but we ended up moving back to California from whence we had come no I married here once I was in the Air Force oh that's so long ago we're talking the uh, late 1970s so that's 20 40 45 years ago long time okay this is from Dave K0, I'm sorry, Dave K04DLQ. He says, I enjoyed your station ground video, number 509. Also look at number 8, which is the main grounding video. But I have a question on bonding the RF ground. A bonding RF ground means you've got a ground rod that's your main station ground rod, uh, but there are other ground rods in the around the house, at least one, where your utility input is, you need to actually stretch a number six wire, uh, preferably bare, not insulated. Uh, I would say preferably insulated, I'm sorry, I would say preferably stranded between those grounds and connect them with clamp type connectors in order for that to work, okay? Now, uh, he says, um, I have a question on bonding the RF ground. I'm from Northeast Florida and lightning is a constant threat. That is absolutely true. My shack is on the west side of the house and the power and phone hookups are on the east side of the house. Not an uncommon problem. My shack, let's see, um, I would like to put up a dual band vertical for VHF, UHF and eventually an NFED antenna for HF once I pass the general exam. Absolutely. I have concrete around the shack side Ooh, with no real ability to add more than one or two vertical rods and no place to bury a bonding wire around it. I do have a small crawl space for a bonding wire. No, you don't want bonding wires in the house. You want to keep lightning out of the house. Okay, no place to bury a, bounding, a bonding rod around it. I do have a small crawl space for bonding wire, but it would be a 35-foot run to the other side under the house. I'm a bit hesitant to route it this way. I don't blame you. My thought was to put the antenna on the east side and ground it to a new ground rod with a lightning arrestor and then bond it with the power and phone line ground rods. This would leave the shack RF ground unbonded. Uh-uh. Uh, but I would disconnect the antenna when not in use. Not sure if this is a good solution for not. Any recommendations or thoughts? Thanks for all you do. Enjoys watching the videos. Okay, let's take a look at his situation. He's got a house in Florida. Okay, on and there's a... Um, um, let's get our east and west right. This is north. Okay, so he's over here on the west, uh, and there's concrete out here, and he's got his uh, utility ground over here, 
the ground over here. Now what he needs to do is somehow bond this over to here. Now I would recommend that your shack ground, this is your shack right here, be right here. How do you do that when there's concrete there? Here's what I would do. Uh, contract with a building guy or go get the tool yourself from Home Depot, but you're going to core a hole through that concrete. Right here. Not immediately next to the house because that's going to be an issue with uh, the fact that uh, you have uh, the foundation. Often the foundation footings go kind of like that a little bit. So you want to get it out a foot or so from there. Now what you're going to do is put flower baskets up against this so people don't trip over it. But you're going to come out a foot, core a hole about that big around, drive the ground rod down, okay, leaving a little bit above so you can attach to it. And then bring your ground out here to that. Now, as you said, you can't bury the bonding wire here, so you're going to have to kind of attach it or staple it right at the um, to the concrete here and uh, to the foundation. Better if you can actually staple it to the uh, ground within an inch or so of the house. And then you'll go underground here, and I would put a ground rod here and a ground rod here, and bond those um, and an electrician would be able to do that for you and then you've got a good ground here for antennas that leave from here or go up on the roof or whatever they are you've got your uh, single point grounding stretch thingy uh, here and everything in your shack is bonded to that okay and then you've got uh, you know, you may want to attach your infid halfway down here. Uh, there's lots of trees in Florida, so there may be, you may have uh, some trees that you can use to put that antenna up. I would put the, um, well, inverted V or whatever antenna you have directly above your shack, okay? Or get a pole, like uh, if you take... Uh, a cross link fence top rail, they're about 10 feet long. Put two of them together, the two halves slide into one another. Put your uh, antenna up here, put that pole right here, um, put a bracket around where it goes next to the house, and then a ground strap here to the ground rod here. Okay, and then you've got your coax coming off of that and it's going to come to a lightning arrestor down here okay and then from there it's going to go into the shack it's going to be attached to your radio and your radio is going to be grounded to here so is your power supply and so will your hf radio once you get your hf radio will ground to there and then the antennas will come to the radios okay all right and that'll do it for you i would really rather see you do this and get a proper ground near your shack than try to string things across uh and certainly not in the crawl space do not put anything in the crawl space that can cause a fire you want all that stuff outside and get these buried now, if you were really into this, you would put a strip, a hole here between the pad and the house so that you could bury that. But then you've got this little strip of dirt that's going to forever be growing weeds and probably not the ideal thing. So just put the, uh, tack it down. You can uh, get uh, from building supply. Uh, you're going to have to put some nails into concrete. And there's a way to do that. This is weird, I know. It's the truth. You can buy a portable gun. It's an orange thing like this. And you put a little shell inside of it, a powder thing. Close it all up real good. 
hold it and whack it with the hammer and the thing the shell will fire and drive that nail down into the concrete if you don't know how to do that find a friend who does or get a contractor and then put that uh, above ground uh, which would be number six stranded bare wire there and uh, you know put flower pots against the house or something like that okay so I hope that helps it's an idea what I'm trying to emphasize here is the importance of a good ground right next to your shack with minimal distances from your in-station single point ground uh, to the station single point ground which is that RF out there bring all antenna coaxes down to that point where they go through lightning arresters and the lightning arresters are attached to the ground rod or get one of those entry panels or something for right there and uh, make sure you're grounded properly when you do HF you will find that you will get much less noise on your antenna if you ground it there rather than grounding it here okay and I would ground at the corners here too because that's an awful long run there for that you can add some ground rods ideally they're every six or eight feet but that'll do it okay so I hope that answered your question I'd like to talk to you about the giveaway coming up this is uh, the giveaway um, it's giveaway number two okay and it's for the month of September 2021 if you're watching this after that go to a more recent video and find out what the giveaway number is the number is very important it's giveaway number two okay I got a few cards here that are for giveaway uh, number one and they um, didn't quite make it in time but I, I think a hundred at least a hundred did this is what I've got so far uh, for it I've got quite a few of these and I'll uh, shuffle those up but good before the drawing um, so that's what's being given away um, and to submit an entry send it to Dave Kassler KE0OG giveaway number two or just the number two prominently and it's PO Box 98 Ridgeway Colorado 81432 it's the same address as on QRZ okay and um, send either it on your QSL card or a postcard or a uh, regular size envelope with a single sheet of paper inside that's got your name call sign your shipping address where you want this shipped and then uh, your phone number in case I have questions I don't need your email okay now when I am done with the drawing all of the losing entries go straight into the trash the winning entry goes into the box and back to the winner okay and I will ship it uh, priority mail um, I ship via uh, the post office priority mail um, at one time I had a, a connection through PayPal with UPS but it's not there anymore so I do all my shipping through the postal service note that the postal service is getting slow in its old age and it can take up to a week for a first class letter to make it from some far-flung corner of the United States um, to me here in Colorado okay so uh, mail after or mail prior to about the 27th I'm sorry 23rd or so and then it will get to me in time for the drawing very good uh, if you'd like to support this channel financially you certainly may go to decastlercom slash support uh, one of my favorite ways of support is patreon you can go on patreon and become a patron of this channel converting whatever you want a month uh, into channel funds um, and you, you can actually just pick any amount that you'd like um, now one of the nice benefits of being a patron is that uh, my assistant um, every week picks one video and puts it up several days early on patreon so if you're a patron you get to watch that video before all the rest of the people who watch it please use that benefit too because it's up there 
and I'm almost to 100,000 subscribers, so please subscribe. Please also uh, click like and or dislike, depending on what you like, um, and comment. And until we next meet, 73.